how many future traders out there, especially beginners watching today's video or watching right now, uh, are limited to the funds that they may ha have? And but you may have a little bit put away in savings, uh, not meaning savings that you're going to use to actually, you know, maybe pay a bill with in time if you need the money and pull it out. But you are putting money aside for a personal uh, account in which you can trade with. We're not talking about prop firms um or trying to get funded that way i'm just simply saying that for someone that's got a little bit of funds set to the side and are looking to flip that money and specifically let's say you have 500 dollars today um and you are learning going through the process of um understanding market structure and and being able to read the markets and that's what i recommend starting off with is really being able to sit back and focus in on before you start putting money into that account uh, being able to understand the movement of the market, making its higher highs and higher lows, breaking structure, being able to see setups within the market. You've got to be able to pay close attention to the intricate details of what the market's doing. I always talk about looking left to, left to the chart so you can see just as well because there could be something that's resting below or above that you're not quite seeing. So being able to, from a fuller perspective, being able to look at the market using top-down analysis specifically using higher base chart i'll always start there and I'll always say that use a higher base chart to put you or identify the direction of the market and then start scaling down from there okay now it is honestly possible just to use two charts a higher base and then a lower base entry chart which i do on a daily basis when i'm trading okay the strategy in which i talk about and uh video after video after video that's pretty much the notes and nuts and bolts the you know uh, of, of how i trade okay i'm just marking zones off a higher base chart identifying the direction and then moving down when the market taps that zone pretty easy and it's a quick way to be able to flip that 500 dollars account okay yes you can start with 500 dollars, but I i'm not saying just like day one you have the money today i'm going to give the market a try i need some quick money don't do that to yourself because you may blow that 500 dollars real quick if you do not have a uh, systematic strategy that is actually proven that it's going to work um, and you, you you haven't spent time back testing and forward testing and even even trading and simulation and demo before going live you want to sh show yourself and prove to yourself that that strategy can be consistent so I'm just going to show you quickly what I'm talking about when it comes to confluence using a strategy that works and if we had $500, what we could do with it, okay? Simply put, so if I had a $500 account, um, what would I be interested in or of trading? Micros, okay? Because the margins on the E-mini side of things, full-blown full E-minis like the NASDAQ 100, the E-mini S&P, those margins are high. The NASDAQ alone for one contract, most brokers is $1,000. And in some brokers, it could be a whole lot more than that. For the E-mini S&P 500, the broker I use is $400. Your broker may charge $500, $1,000, whatever it may be. But I trade using Amp Futures. And, you know, they're, they are a reliable broker. And they've been around uh, in the future uh, industry for years. So you can take a look at them. I'm not sponsored by them in any way. I'm just letting you know because people always ask me what broker do I use. But I really want to focus in on uh, letting you know, you know, as far as what I look at. And that's structured. That's important. You have to be able to understand that if you're looking to take a small account and flip it and watch it grow, especially like let's say you have five hundred dollars and you're saying by the end of the week, I want to grow that account to say a thousand dollars. So you have basically proven to yourself that you put five hundred in and now you're up a thousand dollars. Is that possible? Yes, it is. I mean, and you can do it just taking one trade a day. So I'm going to show you right now and how you can actually do this. So let's say you have, you know, again, five hundred dollars, and uh, with the Nasdaq um, one hundred futures, that's the micros. Um, like for example, the broker I use is a hundred dollars a margin. It means you have to have a hundred dollars per contract to be able to trade. So I could trade up to five contracts, right? But I don't want to, you know, again, I don't want to um, maximize or leverage my account fully with that five hundred dollars. Okay, the most I probably would use was to be two contracts. Even one contract, okay? But the, the name of the game is really identifying, um, you know, great high probability or quality areas to trade from. That's the key. 
uh, if you want to be able to flip that account, all right? And it is definitely possible to grow that account, you know, 100% and, and make $500 on the week. So you're flipping it from $500 to $1,000 and you can, you know, do that consistently week to week. So if you do that every single week, well, 500 times, you know, times four, that's $2,000 right there on that 400, on that $500 you put in. And that's how you can grow an account to be able to eventually move over if you choose to, to trade the E-mini futures. But the name of the game is all about being able to follow strong structure you know whether we are moving to the upside or not now choose your higher time frame chart whatever it may be and, and whatever charts you choose okay if you use a 60 minute chart you're trading time based then that's fine i use range based charts i'm using 120 range chart but the key to it is, is being able to understand what the market is doing if it's moving lower and breaking structure okay moving higher and breaking structure all right and then identifying if you're going to trade supply or demand okay because you have to understand the trend or which the market is doing but also understand just because it's trend uh, uh, uh trending or whatever the case is you got to understand there could be reversals in the market just as well so um and, and so start with the higher base chart in this case here for example let's say that the market was moving lower like it does here these little boxes i have drawn up these are these are zones that i took interest in or would take interest in on my higher base chart and then move down to a lower base chart simply put all right so the market is moving lower here all right we got a low here but then it starts to break structure back to the upside now what would i be interested in doing because when the market does something like this i'm going to show you right quick let me get a just a drawing tool we are kind of making this movement right here was pulling back making lower lows and lower highs like right here but then it turns back around okay we get a a um making us a high here and then a higher low and then it's breaking structure to the upside here then that's a, a a sign that the market wants to try to reverse and probably push higher for how long we do not know but we can see that it's breaking structure higher so i would wait for maybe the market to come back to this area right here to take a long position okay because now it's made a high a higher low and a higher high breaking structure this is a sign or a, a, a reversal in the market so we wait for a pullback to this area here and as long as it keeps doing that to the upside then I'm just going to be looking for pullbacks to, to, to go long at key areas of demand. So when the market made this low right here and then started moving higher, then we had this high here. So in between a high and a low, okay, there's a leg here. And these swings, these small swings within this leg here, it's like, it's what I like to classify as minor areas of structure. This is a lower area. This would be more of a, a, of a major area of structure back to the downside. There's nothing below this area, as you can see right here. So if it comes down and breaks this area here, this is a major low that's going to break. It's a major, major structure break down to the downside if it, if it pushes lower. So it's playing in between, but then we get a move back down to the downside to where it's breaking below areas of structure, like below this area here at 19,528. That's a break of structure back to the downside, but it's a minor area of structure to the downside. We're still, we can look for, okay, we've got to run to the upside, coming back down, breaking through areas of structure, leaving behind this classic or this beautiful area of supply resting right here. So even if it breaks a, a, a decent area of structure back to the downside in between a leg, uh, and you have structure where it made to the upside, it comes back and, and it makes a high here and then pushes lower and break structure, pulls back, you can mark this area off your higher base chart uh, because it is classified as a... Um, a, a, uh, excuse me, a supply area because we have aggressive selling to the downside, breaking structure, wait for the pullback to that area. Now, here's the thing. This is a higher base chart, okay? Um, if this was a lower base chart, say, for example, like a 24 range, um, then, you know, you want to look for trade setups where the market is pulling back, you know, relatively quick within the session okay being this is a higher base chart okay if it comes back to this area yeah it still holds its ground because this was a nice structure break to the downside two things this was a structure break below this area and aggressive selling two things so that's that, that's going to raise the interest for me uh when it comes to quality setups higher probability there's a gap resting back at the zone what do i mean there's a gap okay take a look here let me show you right quick when i say this what i mean here is the market pushed lower right here, right? Did it immediately come back with any candle, bullish candle or whatever, even a wick of a candle, and come back and test the lower end of this green candle back to the upside right here? Last push to the upside. No, it didn't. So it left a gap. Okay, I'm going to delete this right quick. It left a gap going lower, okay? And it did not even pull back to this area where I have boxed off until the next day around 10 o'clock. This is a beautiful, beautiful supply area. And I had already marked it up the prior day because on uh, August 29th, 
around two o'clock in the afternoon because I knew this was a key area of supply on my higher base chart. And I knew if the market comes back here that we could possibly get a slight dip or at least pick up my 20 points that I'm looking for, uh, you know, my first TP area in a sense, okay, on the NASDAQ. So I'm interested in that. The market pulls back to that area uh, around 10. I have it marked off. And then this is where I'm really interested because once now it taps into that zone, all I do is move down to a lower base chart, my 24 range chart, okay? But whatever your lower base chart is, a time-based chart, tick, volume, whatever you trade, and it taps into the zone, then you're looking for the same thing to kind of happen, okay? The last part or the leg of the strategy to where you mark a higher base zone, it taps into it eventually. When it does tap into it, and it is a quality setup, that is where there's a gap at to where you have a nice break of structure, to where you have a beautiful supply run or demand run, if it was in reverse, and then it taps into the higher base zone, moving to a lower base zone, we're looking for a supply area or supply setup just as well. So what I'm gonna do now is just move over to my higher base chart right quick. I do wanna mark this up and put it on all charts so we can see it on the 24, 24 range. If I said higher base, I meant lower base chart. Oh, I, I erased that, no I didn't. Okay, there it goes. I meant lower base chart. We're going to move to the lower base chart and we're going to finish out the remaining portion of the setup again if we do this okay i'm going to show you if we can pick up let's say 20 points on the uh nasdaq 100 futures micros okay so with my broker for example the nasdaq 100 futures it trades at 50 cent a tick yes it's not a lot when it comes to micros but it still can accumulate because if we can get 20 points Okay, in 20 points, that means there's four ticks in every point. So times four, that's 80 ticks. I've shown this before, but I'm giving you a rundown because I wanted people to understand how you can flip that $500 that you want to and put into your brokerage account and you can watch it grow over time and build up and compound to where you can eventually start trading, uh, you know, the E-minis if you choose to or start trading more contracts eventually. That's the name of the game. So now we're at 80 ticks, okay? By picking up and trading, just one trade. You don't need to be in the market all day long. If you can get a solid one, maybe two trades a day, then you're done. If you replicate this twice, which I'm gonna show you, and set up just like this, and pick up 80 ticks per trade, even with one contract, I'm gonna show you, all right? That's 20 times four, that's 80 ticks, times 0.5, okay, which is 50 cent, okay? That's $40 on one contract. You do that, we'll say two contracts, all right, times two, then that's 80 bucks. So you can take this and again, make on well, two trades if you do this, or it could be more than that if you pick up more than 20 points, okay? Because if you're trading with two contracts, maybe you let, uh, uh, took out at 20 points on your first contract and you left a runner, meaning on that second contract, allow it to run. Hey, you may pick up another 20 points, okay? And then you went from, uh, 20 points only to pick it up 40 points and then 40 times four, okay, that's 160 uh, ticks. So you're basically doubling it up. But if you did this with two contracts on those 20 points, then you're making $80 off that one move, okay? So what I'm trying to say is that you can make an easy, you know, say for example, $160, $200 a day. Um, and even if you did this and make $100 a day, that's $500 by the end of the week. Just take a one trade, take a one quality setup, one trade, because again, you shouldn't be look to get, looking to get rich off of just investing or putting in 500 bucks. You should be just trying to grow that, okay? Your own money, $500, which is not much money, but taking that money and watching it or allowing it to grow, doubling up within the first week, taking your money from 500 to $1,000, just simply being able to make $100 a day. Okay, that should, that's an easy goal to do. It's, it's very achievable. And then you do that every single week, making $500 every week. Do that times four. Say, for example, again, you get $2,000 over, okay, the $500 you originally started with. So now your account is up $2,500, you know, gross minus commissions, whatever the case is. Um, and then you just keep repetitionally doing that. And then you can build that account up to maybe in a couple months, you're at, at a $10,000 account. Okay. But you, it's all about risk management just as well. But, and you can do this. This is this is simply easy to do if you are consistent, if you are patient and waiting for the right setup. So I'm going to walk you through the rest of the trade right quick. We're going to go down to the 24 range. And remember that zone that I marked up was from August the 29th. Okay. It was around what? A two o'clock in the afternoon. Now, it didn't come back to that zone on the higher base chart until 10 p.m. the next day. But look what happened here. We got this beautiful area of supply off the 120 range from the prior day, right? Now, 
I'm, I'm bringing this in. I'm scaling it in, squeezing it in, so you can so you can see it. So we're going back. We gotta look to the left hand side of the chart. If there is a supply area within this supply area of off the higher base chart, I'm gonna be interested. So I'm gonna have to go back over here and see. All right. This is that 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 area on the prior day around two o'clock. I'm gonna blow it up a little bit to see if we have a supply area that's an unmitigated zone within the higher base zone. Okay, right here. Let's blow this up a little bit so we can see a little bit more. Right here, see there's an unmitigated area here. It's a gap right here off a structural break to the downside on the lower base 24 range chart. Then mark it up, okay? Just mark it up. And we we'll see if we can bring it across here. We have to bring it across. Uh, let's see. I'm going to bring this, squeeze, squeeze this in so we can do this. It's going to be a little tough. All right, but I'm going to show you. I'm going to bring this, continue bringing this out here. Make sure I got this right. Okay, let's keep going. Boom. Okay, bring it out. You can see it is going to hit that area right there. That round that's that 627, 628 area. It taps that zone. This is the a, a supply area. So basically, we have a supply within a supply. Supply on the higher base zone, supply on the lower base zone. Rejection off of the supply on the lower base chart. Okay. All right. And the zone. So a zone within a zone. So when it gets to that area, all we're looking for is a uh, basically, the confirmation when the break and close of the candle to the downside. All right, so it gets it taps it, and I talk about if if, if the if the a candle closes inside the zone, be careful about that because they may be trying to push higher. In this case here, uh, but it taps the zone. If you get a wick away from the zone, in this case here, it taps it. We get a wick, so we're looking for a candle to break below. Okay. All right, meaning a a break and close of a candle below to go short. So it depends on you know which. Uh, where you're going to get at, at, get in at, okay? If you're waiting for the break and and, and and close of this last bearish candle to the upside right here, so maybe it's below uh, 617 for you. Maybe you're waiting for, okay, it to, uh, say for example, this bearish, this candle here, this bearish candle where wick and, and tap into that lower base zone. Then the next candle form was a bullish candle to the upside. And then maybe you're waiting right here at 619. So either way, I mean, it, 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 you know, it's up to you. Um, but I like to say, Typically, wait for the break and close of that last bullish candle to the upside, which will typically be right here at 17, and then let it go short. Simply put, because you're looking for multiple confirmation off of two charts that's going to raise the chances or probability of a trade working out in your favor. Okay. And this is all centered around starting with a higher base zone and then focusing in on a zero in, zero in, in on a more precise, a precise entry point on a lower base chart. Looking for that rejection, boom, close, breaking cl close of the candle, rejection, go short. So with that said, I'm going to show you on the 24 range, excuse me, the 120 range chart, because people always say, well, where, where do I look to go go long, I mean, go short at? Where you want to place your stop loss at is going to be, for one, at the back end, wherever the rejection takes place at, once it taps that lower base zone, right here above at 19,628, give it a few ticks or points above that area. Where you're going to be looking to take profit at is going to be, um, you know, if there are any demand areas resting below or any significant um, gaps within the markets, uh, for sure. Okay. Now, in this case here, I really don't see any gaps, right? The market broke structure to the upside right here. So it did have some, uh, a gap right here. All right. Right here. Uh, and But everything else was kind of filled back to the upside when it started making these, these swings to the upside and pulling back. Okay. Um, so but the key is what I would focus in on is trying to at least get my first 20 points. Okay. Some of you may be saying, Hey, I like to, I like to take trades based on a one-to-one. -one. Now, if you're doing a one-to-one, -one, then basically what you probably want to do is just basically if you're using a risk to reward tool. Okay. So if, if I knew that this area here is 628 and look at the lower time or lower base chart, like I showed you after we get that break and close of the candle right here on the lower base after tapping into that supply area, all right, on the both the higher base and the lower base chart then just switch back over to your higher base chart and if you're using the risk to reward kind of tool or uh, a scenario then you want to measure this off okay if you say well i'd rather go for a one-to-one -one versus 20 points then maybe do something like this all right you're waiting for that break and close so let's say right here that uh this is the area you saw the rejection off the lower base chart then you can take this candle here this last bullish candle and then this formation of this a uh, candle right here, this bearish candle to the downside after it closes, and then the next candle that say closes starts um, starts opening and closing to the downside. So you can do something like this right here, all right. And then your 
Um, this is your risk reward. If you're going for a one to one, you can double click on it. If you're using NinjaTrader, click on one. That's going to give you a one to one. And come on, computer. All right. So your first area probably will be right here at what is this? 68, 66, something like that. 568 right there. I believe it is. Let me see. Uh, yeah, 568. So, okay. You te te technically, you're not getting into around 617. So if you get in here at 617, uh, and looking again at the lower base chart and waiting for that break and close of the candle on the lower base chart. But if you got in at 617 and you were able to take it down to this area here, 568, where well, you picked up quite a bit of points. And that's based off of one to one. Once we get the tap on the higher base, the tap on the lower base uh, chart as well, we get the break and close of the candle to give us confirmation rejection to go short. Then you can go back to your higher base chart, aim for a one to one, or just try to pick up that first 20 points and then maybe leave a runner. But I'm just. I'm giving you different scenarios of how you can actually do this for all those that are asking maybe where to take or take out the market or take profit at or whatever the case is. Trying to aim for a one to one is smart. Trying to pick up those 20 like I do, uh, you know, and then maybe leave a run it. That's smart. You can, you can tackle this multiple ways. Trying to see if there are gaps below and aiming for those gaps below. You could do that as well. Okay. Trying to take it from the supply area. Maybe there's a demand area resting below. You could do it, do that just as well. The key to it is just being able to identify quality setups, being smart, knowing where to put your stop loss at, as well as knowing uh, the signs of rejection and confirmation to get into a trade using this multi-target influence. So I'm, I'm, I'm breaking the strategy down for those that are watching this, the first time viewers. And if you want more in depth to where I go into actual trade setups that I've taken, where I've taken setups. Post a trade entries over on our Discord community, okay? If you're not part of the Discord community, you may want to join. The link is right down in the description portion of the video. Right below that is another link, okay? It is to become an elite member, part of the community, to where you support my efforts as a content creator, but what you're getting back in return are the trade breakdowns. These are where, this is where I go into detail about trade setups that I've taken, okay? And post it over in the community, all right. And then went through the trade setups in detail and broke down the setups so that you grasp and understanding my thought process behind every trade. OK, why I took out and I post, you know, the profit target areas, stop loss areas. I talk about why I put the stop loss there, why I took out at those uh, trade positions or, you know, those, those target areas. Uh, but just basically walking you through each setup because every setup is going to look a little different. So I break things down, maybe asking what's the cost. It's a very nominal fee, okay? Because look, I'm not here to, you know, try to gouge anyone's pockets or anything. This is just a way for you to support me as a content creator and me continue making valuable content like this because this this content actually helps people out. So it's just $6.99 a month. That's all it is. And, and I'm telling you, there are traders that can vouch for what I'm saying. This, these videos have helped tremendously. You got to think about it. When you can, these videos, this content, where I walk through these trade setups, it's like being in a, a virtual class, okay, or I'm sitting, you're sitting right next to me. I'm breaking things down so that you can understand. You can understand visually what I was thinking and why I took these setups. Again, the link is right down in the description portion of the video for anyone that's interested, okay, in getting the trade trade breakdowns, all right? It, it, it helps to see things like that. Not just, you know, showing you here on this video here, um, you know, which is great, me covering the strategy and breaking things down and giving you scenarios and showing you how you can take a small account and flip it and make $500. Yeah, you could do that. But showing you actual trades that are taken and breaking them down works, okay? It, it really does because you can see it, um, you know, because the, the, the recordings, there are videos of which I've covered on trades I've taken and um, people can grasp and understand. And it's, it's very educational, I guess what I'm trying to say. So if you're interested in joining, the link is in the description portion of the video. Right below the Discord link, click on that and you'll see two tiers pop up. Make sure you choose the one for $6.99. People always ask me how they can become part of the Elite Membership Program. Um, and I thank you for everyone that is... Uh, supports my efforts to con as a content creator by doing so and this is the one of the rewards that I give back I give you the trade breakdowns. I give you the video playlist. I give you uh, Like great market structure video. There's a great market structure video uh, If you become an elite member where I break down structure so you can understand it uh, as and as 
best as a of a uh, elementary standpoint because you know i don't want to kind of make things complicated nobody should make trading complicated all right the more simple it is the better you can understand and be on your way to you know hopefully a profitability but anyways hopefully this video like this helps you out okay if you're not a current sub please take the time go ahead join the community it's free to join the community click on the subscribe button down below Make sure to turn your post notifications on so you don't miss any of the uploads here on the channel. And last but not least, if you found value in today's video, I would definitely appreciate it if you click on that like button. It helps to get the video content out to groups of people that are really focusing in on researching for valuable content and which would aid them and help them in their own trade. Thank you for watching. I'll see everyone. Have a great weekend.